Hey, everybody. So welcome to uh, the Play versus Spring 2022 CIF Initiative Championship. My name is Skip. With me is Sai. <laughs> Brief uh, audio issues, but we'll try to get that settled in just a moment. Sai, are you with us? Yeah. Hey, everybody. I'm so mad. I, I was full energy giving you guys an intro that only <laughs> i think only my cat heard so we're just gonna move forward but yes welcome back to more action with play versus uh today we're gonna have another great match between the hillmar smash team and the team coming from holy bros uh of course this is uh presented by omen uh nvidia and the california army national guard so we got some pretty big sponsors coming into this how you feeling today skiff i'm feeling good you know uh on thursday we had a couple championship matches going on and Man, they were full of surprises, full of entertainment. Uh, you and I were pleasantly surprised with quite a few players that were on there, uh, just for all high schoolers and stuff like that. I mean, I know the kids that are absolutely insane at this game, but man, we saw some real good gameplay. Yeah, I was genuinely like completely earnestly really blown away by how talented everybody was. Uh, so I'm excited to see more of that today. I, I can't see, I can't wait to see what we're going to get into. And uh, as I always say, it always feels like kind of a surprise. I never really fully know unless it's like a huge like noticeable big name like oh spargo goes to this high school <laughs> like unless it's something like that <laughs> yeah. like i'm always just kind of like oh i wonder who they're gonna play i wonder what they're gonna do but i like to be surprised it, uh you know keeps us on our feet as casters you know it keeps everybody entertained as a viewer so uh yeah i'm excited i can't wait to get this started and um again if you're curious this uh, if you happen to be just tuning in just now for Smash, uh, previously they were running Rocket League and After Us is going to be League of Legends. So uh, Play Versus uh, definitely has a lot of versatility in the games that they uh, help curate together for these events. So uh, big shout out to them just off that alone, you know? Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Uh, but also just quick little shout out here. We would like to give a special thanks to HP and HyperX for their support in the CIF Esports Initiative, as well as providing prizes to the championship teams of Smash, Rocket League, and League of Legends. So definitely a big old thank you. You mentioned the uh, some of the uh, support we had earlier. We'll be getting to you know, dive in a little bit more of that a little bit later. But for right now, uh, just a quick little shout out to them. But yeah, uh, I'm super excited to see how everything's going to be playing out here. It looks like we're going to be having Hillmar Smash taking on Holy Bros, like you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, really, it just kind of comes down to... <laughs> Let's see how it happens. Let's see how it plays <laughs> out. As as before, though, it should be best of five sets going to be played between each player on each team, right? So it's a best of three. It's a best of five within best of threes. So each team's going to have three players, regardless of the fact if one team does go 2-0, we are going to see all three players from all three or all three teams from both teams um, kind of, you know, bring, you know, get their get their game on. You know, we don't want anybody here to just show up and just not do anything. Yeah, exactly. And and we were talking about that uh, or we spoke about it yesterday, how like it's cool that they do that just because you still want to see, you know, all the talent the team has to offer. You don't want to see a player come in and just be like, oh, well, we forfeit or we quit or whatever, um, because the last match of the night, we saw that a team went up to oh, so they had already been guaranteed to win. But mm -hmm. the final player on the team that automatic that was, you know, going to lose, like they still came in and they ended up winning their set. You know, they still showed us how talented they were as a player. So um, I really do like the play versus does that. Also, the the format of having a full best of five, like it really does let the players have a lot more screen time. It lets mm -hmm. them, you know, crew battles. I love them, but they're very, very high pressure situations. You have a lot more time to like recollect and like, you know, reform strategies. Um in this format versus crew battles where it's a lot more about like it's a lot more improv heavy you're like all right cool i've seen a little bit of what this person does i have to keep them off guard and it it, it lends the regular crew battle format lends itself to a lot more like shenanigans i would say like oh, if you, yeah. you know like if you're like all right i know what's going on and then someone comes <laughs> like, in we've with, seen like, some like, some legendary runs too like uh i think one of the more prominent crew battles uh in recent memory was actually at let's make moves let's make big moves sorry where we had like mr e just absolutely go on a tear at the end i mean granted tri-state wasn't able to win against the world but i mean still you see moments like that and it's just like it creates a different type of hype so yeah exactly and, and that's the stuff i like to see and and, and honestly there's just so many elements that come into play with that format. Like you could be like, you could be a top 10, top 20 player in the world. You got to fight Gary's me gunner, two, one, three, whatever. You're like, okay, I don't know what this is going to be. <laughs> you only have like three stocks to figure it out, you know? So I do, exactly. I do enjoy both of these formats, honestly. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll be kicking in some smash action for you in just a moment. I'm sure the teams are ready getting, uh, getting everything set up, but, um, but yeah, so yeah uh, you that's know, we're where just that's this is going to <laughs> you end you know what what were you doing last night actually because we didn't have any smash bros to kind of go off of i do know there's been some smash bros events 
throughout today like right now there's low tide city going mm-hmm. off uh like uh right now actually we got our boys censored and banjo actually going off on comms there so that's oh, cool pretty good well uh, i, I know boss battles done. boss battles is also currently going on over in i believe the uk actually speaking of crew battles they just had the uk taking on france and uk actually won that one really i need to look mm-hmm. into uh the uk's talent pool honestly because I, oh, I feel like i hear goodness. a little bit more about oh. france I've been blessed to be able to do English comps for like the French scene. And, you know, when the French has like their giant majors, European majors, you know, everybody tends to show up to, to the wanted series, Mm -hmm. man. Oh, it is, it is absolutely an honor to be able to cast for those guys because they are some insane players. That is super dope to know. I'm really excited. And, uh, Hey, I don't know, maybe somewhere in the future, I'll get to get to join you on an endeavor like that. But as for what I did last night, so last night was another, huge scramble so of course Thursday super busy day for me uh obviously with us both you know casting for so long um after work but also I went to work came back had to go shopping Mm -hmm. had to edit the podcast that I produce or had it had to edit my podcast went to see a phenomenal concert uh between uh Tori Moi and uh Krangbin Krangbin being this uh really incredibly talented like funk uh slash disco group uh, mm-hmm. from down in Texas, went to that concert, then went to several bars after that concert, and then passed out, and <laughs> then slept in a little bit. So I definitely I slept a, in a little bit today, too, so I totally I had a it. very full Friday. I definitely didn't get to check out any of um, Low Tide last night, um, but I'll probably take a look at it tonight, though, for sure. You know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I think they're just, uh, I mean, it's Saturday, so it's going to be a large majority of the pools and whatnot, and then, you know, they'll go into the top eights tomorrow, so that should be good. Um, all I know is that my boy Sky J is seated to at number 11, so I'm hoping to see it. Really? In, yeah, I mean, Sky J is also insane. So He's I'm, good, he's good. I'm just hoping but, to see okay. it in our top eight at a major. That's, that's just what I'm hoping. Has that not happened yet, actually? I just realized. I that do not yet, think it? it has. Now, at least not at a major, like, a big major. I mean, there's mm-hmm. probably been some regionals, maybe some, like, C-tier majors or something like that. But outside that, I don't think Incineroar has made the run. And you know what? I'm okay with that because that allows me to continue to push the agenda that Incineroar is definitely a bad character, and, and he, he is. So um, I agree that he's bad, but there's just an asterisk on it. Like, he's bad, but there's just some wild card stuff he can pull off, and I'm just like, oh, okay, well yeah no he's, he's definitely a wild character I've, I've actually heard uh i saw the argument recently it's like uh anybody who could do 56 percent off one forward air is definitely a top tier <laughs> you know what that's a good argument that's a good argument and i uh i played a bracket match i think it was like a month and a half ago and it was incineroar incineroar was at 150 i was like at 50 a snake and the incineroar player had just like they had revenge like a random mortar and i'm like okay whatever and they got a side b and they killed me from center stage mm-hmm. at 50 with that side b so then i just switched to young link the next two games and won and they're like why'd you switch to a worse matchup i was like because i don't want the option of i don't know if it's a worse matchup but i also don't want you to kill me because you found one thing like right. i don't i would i would rather just first of all switch to young link i'm like now we're not gonna play the game because if that's how you're gonna treat me you're uh, just not gonna get to play so. oh man that, that is that is a rough matchup i'd, I'd 100 100 times out of 10. <laughs> I would rather fight a snake over a young link as it's I'm sure because he doesn't throw anything strong enough for you to revenge it and it actually matters I mean, so it's just like... he does because you're still gonna get like 50 60 or whatever but like it's getting through that's the issue also um, that yeah yeah that that's that's the bigger problem here uh we are having a little bit of delay trying to get the talent into the arena so we do apologize for taking a little bit of extra time here so we might actually be t- throwing it to a little bit of a break. So don't go anywhere. We will be back with some Smash Ultimate action. Stay tuned.
It's all original. It's all original. It's all original. It's all original.
understand an upside down world. But they're writing us off before we get to the starting line. A stalled generation? Who do you think is gonna fix all this? We will, because our future is the future. So we're going to build bridges and hospitals in a day and feed those left in the cold. We're going to do all this and more because we have an appointment with destiny.
It's all original. It's all original. It's all original. It's all original.
It's all original. It's all original. It's all original. It's all original.
All right, All so right. I'll go first. <laughs> okay, okay. We never actually established which one of us should be bringing us back in today. Uh, Skiff, go for it. You, you have, you have, you have <laughs> Anyway, point. sorry for the delay. We had some technical issues, but it seems like we've got everything resolved now. Welcome back to Play Versus. We've got the CIF Initiative Esports Championship on deck right now. And we're going to be out to be getting into this. Uh, it, it should be a good time again, just like this past Thursday. We're going to be doing best of five sets. And for each um, match that's won, that player will score a point for their team. And if the first team to get the two obviously wins, and so it's mm -hmm. like a best of three, but best of fives win the best three. It's a, it's a bit of a bit of a wonky process, but it's, it's exciting. It gets all these players a lot of time to play. And um, yeah, it should be a good time. So Sai, what are you uh, hoping for here? I'm hoping to just be really surprised. I'm hoping to see a player that I've not heard of do something crazy and just keep me really entertained and on the edge of my seat. And that's what we've been seeing uh, so far from everything we saw on Thursday. And I just really hope that trend continues. I'm really excited. Uh, I never really know what characters we're going to see. But every time I see a character, I'm like, okay, I don't really know what's going on. Well, but I do see uh, someone like with like really fully optimized combos, like crazy edge guards. I always see really good play. And that's at the end of the day, that's all we really want. So it looks like we're going to actually see some Sora action. It's going to be Sora versus DK. Uh, Sora's in an interesting place in the meta where like everyone thinks we're sleeping on him or everyone thinks that we should continue to doubt him. Nobody really knows. I think the character has a lot of tools. I think they're solid. Uh, and I'm excited to see what we're going to see uh, in this match with this character. This character is clearly not the top tier we all feared they would be. That is for top sure. Top tier, no. Uh, but they are, they are good. It's just I... It's kind of the same thing with Sonic. Sonic's good, but to play Sonic optimally, you kind of have to limit out a little bit. And I feel like that's mm -hmm. exactly the same thing with Sora. Now, I am partially in the camp that Sora is a top two lame character in the game, but I'm not going to harp on that too much. Uh, as we move Ooh. Forward here. But right now, that was a huge forward smash from Charles. And you know what? I'll take a little bit of credit for that. I did warm up his Donkey Kong a little bit. <laughs> you did warm up the DK. The really unfortunate thing about that is that Sora can spend so much time hanging out at the ledge. Nice combo, of course. All right, we, we do have the their uh, strings on lock, but they can spend so much time at the ledge, like getting roll red in that way isn't something that Sora's really uh, susceptible to. I, I would expect more of a jump read, but uh, hey, it gave Charles a free stock, so it is what it is. Yeah. Aiden is really struggling to close out this first stock too. He had a great lead, but he cannot land a kill move. Everything's just getting punished on shield, and he's just kind of struggling right now. Uh, he's definitely Oof. fishing for that one uh, up special to try and close out this stock, and this could continue to be bad. Donkey Kong moving at 181. That's a lot of range for the big guy. That, yeah, it is. And uh -oh. as you were talking about up special, like, Sora doesn't really have to commit to up special to kill. Like, or, well, there's Dare. Uh, forward tilt is surprisingly good at killing. Like, there's a lot of options outside of something as committal as that. Um, but maybe, of course, this is not a traditional crew battle. This is, of course, a full three out of five set. So we do get to see both players fully learn and adapt to each other. And that's that's another thing I really like about the play versus series. Yeah, unfortunately, there is a little bit of lag at the moment, but it doesn't seem to be disrupting the game at large for the most part. But right now, we are going to see Charles continue to pile on this damage here. 106, but Aiden off to the, uh, the races here, starting to put a little bit on themselves. That up special is a lethal move. So, I mean, Charles is going to have to be careful about that one. Yeah, and uh, Aiden is very, very good about like racking up a bunch of damage at the beginning of the, of the stock. He's just struggled a little bit closing it out. But so far, he's already taken the lead fully back. Hasn't been hit by Charles once uh, since he took that stock. And he's just really, really piling it on. Oh, and he gets a shield break for all his efforts, too. All that right, that walk was disgusting. I, I know what you mean. Crazy. I was not expecting a shield break from Sora of all characters. But I guess I finally got to see one. Down smash does a ton of damage. Oh my gosh. And Donkey Kong just paying the heavy tax over and over. But Charles is finding back with that up air. Going to even the stocks out. Hopefully, he can kind of slow things down from Aiden's surprisingly fast Sora pace. Yeah, and now that the fact that we do have the heavy tax paid here, we're going to see if Charles can continue to try and find ways to pile on damage. The back air coming from Donkey Kong, one of the best back airs in the game, free. That's definitely going to oh, put free. out a, a couple nice solid hits here. It continues to utilize it. If you had about three more aerials as good as... Oh, oh my God, it doesn't matter. Get <laughs> clapped. <laughs> he Jesus put him, He put him in the Ice Age afterwards, but it did not <laughs> matter, did. man. Oh, my goodness. That was just rough. <laughs> ah. So, Charles is really good at ledge trapping Aiden, it looks like. Um, Sora has a lot of options to get off the ledge uh, or, like, delay his time there, or he can stall for a long time and try to force you to try to, like, 
uh, get a two frame while he's throwing thunder and stuff like that. But Charles is just like, I'm going to F smash you. And that first stock, he's like, hey, it doesn't really matter your plan because I'm going to F smash you. And this mm -hmm. is the same thing that happened with the third. So Aiden could at least look at that and be like, hey, that guy really likes F smashing and it's working. So we're going to have to play around that a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out here. Uh, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a character switch from Charles. I'm not sure if they are just straight up a Donkey Kong main. If they are, I mean, they definitely know how to play around the character's weaknesses, which is usually being a big body. And we didn't mm -hmm. really see any heavy attempts of um, an edge guard from Aiden which I feel like Sora has the tools to really punish Donkey Kong off stage. But he can run off and just counter, right? He like, pretty much can. And then Donkey yeah. Kong just kind of has to hold that. Like, there's just no way around it. But the one thing I do want to see here from Aiden is just try to dial it back a little bit. We see we saw a couple really committal moves. Um, we saw them fishing heavily for the up special at one point, just trying to mm -hmm. close out the stock. We saw that down air too. Down air is a very committal move from Sora. So they do have to be careful about that one in general. But I'm interested to see if Charles is even going to stick with Donkey Kong, assuming he's fighting a Sora. Maybe he's got a, a, you know, a pocket pick and can try to bring out a little bit more damage, try to dominate the game a little bit more. Yeah, because because here's the thing. Sora's down air, if you keep it as a knowledge check and you very rarely do it, is really good. It's a great way to catch somebody off guard. But if you try to bring that in as like a key neutral tool, <laughs> oh, they're going to look for it. They're going to punish it. And if anybody has a range, Donkey Kong's, he's got F tilt. He's got, um, you know, he's got neutral B. If he really reads you, he's got forward smash. He's got a lot of ways to like really hard punish that if he calls it out. But as you were saying with edge guarding earlier, yeah, I saw the only attempt I really saw was that he would kind of throw thunder at the ledge as Charles would recover low. And it didn't really lead to much. But considering Donkey Kong's very linear, I think if he just runs out and just counters, even if it doesn't necessarily just kill, it mm -hmm. sets up a situation where he's he's just positioned really well for free edge guards. Oh yeah, and even not even just that, but like uh, if he sets up his spells correctly, he could easily like uh, be reverse thunder or even blizzard um, mm -hmm. to just really mess with Donkey Kong's recovery, especially at those higher percentages. We are going to see him stick with the Donkey Kong, but the combos will not stop. As we see Aiden switch over to Mario, this could be a okay. bad time here because Mario is a combo machine, loves to take some early stocks themselves. We'll see how they're able to play this one around and getting that additional platform. That's exactly what we want to see here. That's going to be a huge boon for him. Did they run back to uh, Battlefield? They're they going to, to battlefield? Uh, just regular Battlefield. Battlefield? Okay, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, this is a great counter pick. A hard counter pick, honestly, if you really had to had to oh, really yeah. uh, think about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not sure if Yoshi's is, is on the table here. I, I forget what stages are actually legal for this one, but still, uh, Battlefield just as good. I mean, you pretty much have the same blast zones as we just saw. Uh, actually, I think it might be a little, little I, I forget, but either way. I think, it, like, it, I think it's a little higher here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, the, it, it is a little bit higher because of the top platform. That is correct. Yeah, that that's definitely still a good spot for Mario. But we'll see how Charles plays around it. We're trying to go for some crazy shield pressure there. And there are the up airs that we were expecting to see. All right. Uh, we definitely saw a little bit of a knowledge check with that down B. Uh, Aiden happens to be jumping out at just the last moment with his shield. But because it keeps staying so low, I think if Charles is to go for something else, just even like a raw F smash or neutral or something like that, he might get a shocking shield break. Uh, himself, which he was a victim to in the first game. Ooh, I do. Oh, okay. Interesting spot. All right. I do like what Charles was trying to do there. He just went for the raw, just, you know, just throw him off stage and tried to cop, cow out that high recovery, right? He wanted to be able to get that back air and just close out that stock immediately. Huge parry, though, is going to allow him to get a big up air, not going to be able to take the stock yet. Both these players still kind of jockeying for the lead. Yeah. Uh, but once again, Charles showing us just some exceptional edge guard. He's really good about waiting for Aiden and just honestly, he's. Ooh. If he isn't planning this or reacting and just guessing right, he's guessed right every time. But went a little bit too ham going for that uh, double jump nair and SD, unfortunately. So the stocks are going to go right back to you. Well, I mean, hey, you know what? Sometimes it's just about sending the message here. And I feel like Donkey Kong is a character that is supposed to send messages, right? I mean, everybody thinks that he's a low tier, like bottom of the barrel. But no, this character's advantage state is disgusting. Oh! And wow, barely going to be able to survive that one. Wow, forward throw, forward air. That is, that is some prime <laughs> Mario degeneracy right there. 100%. Uh, it, I wasn't ready for it. 
and neither was Charles. But he still uh, was only at like maybe 20-ish when it connected. So he's still around and he's still forcing Aiden off stage these edge guards over and over again. Aiden hasn't been able to mix up the way he's recovering much. And I know Mario's kind of linear, but if Charles keys in on that, we can see another really early stock loss. Oh, honestly, yeah, it could be really devastating here because Mario does, I mean, has a good recovery, but it's still very linear, right? I mean, the resources mm -hmm. disappear. You're not going to be able to recover from anywhere like some other characters like Pac-Man or something like that. So he does have to be careful. Charles is kind of letting the spinning Kong rip on the ground. Not going to be able to make it work, though. Okay. Oh, but there's another one coming out. All right. Not going to kill just yet. They were pretty far to the left of uh, center there. So Aiden's got one more chance at this. And nice down air to add on the extra pressure there. Kind of keeping Charles in the, up in the air. But I don't know if he can do too much to juggle up to this position. Kind of looks like Charles is reset. And Aiden is uh, starting to let trap. Oh, that Ooh! fireball actually going to do it. Okay. A one, a two, and the three taking the stock. Beautiful yeah. stuff from Aiden, actually. That was actually really well played. It was, yeah, yeah. He was really struggling to uh, find those uh, gimps earlier, but looks like Mario might be the switch he needed to get him. Yeah, no, it definitely helps out a little bit. And it's kind of insane that you see those little dinky fireballs just able to close out those stocks. But we do see Charles answering back like the force that they have definitely shown themselves to be. Oh, uh... no! You hate to see it. You hate to see it. So he's like, hey, you guys want to see a fastball in air? You see a really <laughs> fast fastball in air? He's like, look what I can do. Watch this. Like that, that's unfortunate. He just threw himself I know off the stage. <laughs> I know he just wanted to land uh, on the ground, but he was just a couple couple inches too far to the left. Yeah. And totally beefed it right there. So it's gonna be one one. Um it definitely seems like Mario seems to be a little bit better for Aiden's playstyle. Aiden seems to have a really aggressive playstyle, and Sora, you can kind of make that work, but you don't have the mobility to like justify it. Yeah. Mario, it's you can play an aggressive Mario and do just fine especially against bigger bodied characters but i do want to point mm -hmm. out that even though we saw charles lose that game he had to sd twice for aiden to get the w so that's true yeah and basically sd at like 30 on the final stock so i mean honestly if i'm charles i'm not feeling too bad i just gotta clean up a few things it's actually really ironic considering that he sd twice but the four throw fair didn't kill him <laughs> like yeah. the thing that you would expect to have killed him he was like oh no we eat those no problem <laughs> yeah well, like it's like donkey kong's recovery uh vertical recovery is a little bit better than it has been in past games so it definitely helps a little bit but yeah usually when you see donkey kong kind of get comboed like that any character but get comboed like that by mario you're kind of like ah that's that's just kind of it so yeah um i've don't know if he has any pocket characters or he'll switch uh, or not, but uh, one thing I noticed is that Charles definitely seems to be like a, a more reaction heavy character. He's letting Aiden uh, sort of control the flow of the match and he's just getting hard punishes from just like Aiden overextending. So maybe right. through the course of this set, if Aiden is able to like, cause, cause when you see, when I see really, really, really gifted like top players do is like, they'll go super crazy aggressive, aggressive and then just like chill out and just get mad defensive out of nowhere and they're able to just like switch on and off between like aggro and defense and it's hard for people to like get a handle on their pacing and their play style i think if uh he's able to slow it down a little bit just every once in a while in there and just kind of like you know maybe a couple empty hops on his shield or some tomahawks he can really really start throwing uh charles off all right you know it also could just be a matter of stage pick too for aiden because uh going to the battlefield he probably wants to try and get something going but now that we're on smashville here which is charles counter pick we're seeing the sword come back out the play and, and you know what i don't know how i feel about that because sword is a very very light character and donkey kong seems to be doing pretty well here for the most part yeah he sure does but uh despite the way that all started uh aiden did sneak in a quick 45 right there he, he if, if if anything he definitely has his character's combos down i, I will say that mm -hmm. uh, there we go looking for the ding dong not gonna be able to get that one to happen but finds a way back to stage looking for a strong edge guard aiden again being very floaty here this is what you kind of called out last time this character's mobility is a bit of a problem and we're just gonna get it tossed in the blast zone uh i feel like i haven't seen that happen in a while <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right the throwback okay well, uh, Charles once again taking the lead. Um, Aiden kind of struggling oh. to find his footing in neutral and getting tagged with that neutral beefer, as I was saying earlier, just overextending and trying to find some damage. 
Mm -hmm. Ooh, I do like the side B1 nice. just allowing them to get behind. And you can see that Charles, I think, was expecting to get the cross up on the shield and was trying to punish it. But good stuff from Aiden just recognizing that. But you are going to lose a second oh. stock here. And Charles is letting them know. Just throwing a couple jab one twos. Not quite taunting, but definitely you know, flexing a little bit. Oh, yeah. And this is where it starts to get frustrating, too, because you saw Charles. He honestly just he really just stood still for like four or five seconds. He has no problem just waiting for eight to make a decision. Oh. And as we see, that play style heavily oh. wins against somebody that is fully committed to being aggressive. Yeah. Uh, get duffed. I don't, I don't know what to tell you at that point. Honestly, just great uh, game, uh, gameplay from Charles being able to turn around that game too. again with a couple of unfortunate SDs to just really turn it up a notch and just kind of go hog wild there at the end. Uh, again, a yeah, three really. stock though. That's a statement. Yeah, and it's like the Sora the Sora was doing all right. It just didn't work out the first game. Mario, mm -hmm. he won the game, SDs aside. End of the day, he won the game. But when you get three stock, if you have another character, you, you kind of you switch back. So, yeah. Um, I, I expect to see Aiden go back to the Mario. Um, not that I don't think the Sora can do it, but this this just wrong place, wrong time. You know, that's, that's what it feels right. like. This isn't the... Mm, it's yeah, not, they, it's not sore season right they now. Definitely that's, saw, that's what it feels like. They definitely saw Smashville, and they felt a certain way and wanted to go Sora, but, like, listen, sometimes you just got to go with what you're most comfortable with. If Sora was what you were most comfortable with, then you get you got to start thinking a little bit more about those stages because, man, the way that Charles just kind of went off there was a little bit, uh, a little bit intimidating, a little bit scary. And from one perspective, I get it because, like, all right, Sora can't move, but now you have a smaller stage. So, mm -hmm. in theory, he can't really run to you, but he can't really run away. But because Charles is so comfortable just waiting and standing menacingly, like, you got to start mixing it up. You got to start throwing in some grabs. You got to start, you know, throwing out some empty hops. You got to get, you got to, you got to break him out of his comfort zone. That's what it really comes down to. Uh, Charles just seems really locked in on what Aiden wants. And Aiden's gonna have to start finding a way to just kind of break that. Maybe, maybe more projectiles. I'm not 100 percent sure, but just going in and landing on him with like nares and up air just wasn't working out. That's a uh, third game. Right, and here we go into the fourth game, potential final game here as Charles is on game point, and we're going to FD here with Mario. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about Mario on this stage. I mean, he certainly doesn't do bad, but having those platforms certainly extends your combos a little bit better. Okay, and uh, we actually saw he tried the forward throw forward air again, which is one of those things like if it works, great, but also Mario, you can just, you know, you can go for down throw and start chasing him down with up airs and stuff. Like, you don't you don't have to necessarily go for the biggest punish you can find. Sometimes it's, it's more optimal to just, just kind of like look Ooh. for your uh, combo routes so you can get to him. Uh, but he did, yeah. Yeah, no he lost the jump. Back air. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very unfortunate, but I mean, you did get a good, decent start on you know on percentage here you're not behind by a lot 82 percent is definitely doable for mario to close out a stock all right there we go we're seeing this again the fireball was able to oh, get the recovery last Ooh. time recovering too high we saw the panic from charles right to a board smash beautifully played from it by aiden all right yeah great way to turn that around he had a lot of momentum charles had a lot of momentum on his side after that first stock but now aiden's actually in the driver's seat and back to lead but a double dash tag uh <laughs> for his troubles is gonna make that lead uh disappear pretty quickly mm -hmm. all right well let's see how it's playing out here we can see that aiden is starting to dial it back a little bit they definitely mm -hmm. got a nice little opening to be able to close that that first stock and even things up your percentage wise but now we're seeing charles start to do charles things yeah and one thing i'm noticing is that aiden in disadvantage is doing a lot of uh falling neutral air which does lead to a lot like this combo we're seeing right now but i think if charles starts to key onto that habit um once again we can see a surprise stock taken like a straight up uh, neutral beat honestly i think the biggest thing here for charles is that he's very well aware of when aiden wants to air dodge in or roll in because we've seen a couple hard reads we saw them last game we saw mm -hmm. one just barely whiff the forward smash not too long ago but he is gonna close out that second stock charles with a nice lead 91 percent all right, Aiden is on his tournament life right now. Got to figure out something to do here. Charles uh, firing back at the beginning of a string of his own, just really tacking on a bunch of damage. And it looks like he's chasing him off. He doesn't have a jump. And he goes for the risk it all forward air, but he commits a little bit too hard, doesn't get it, and throws away his second stop. Yeah, the, the four. Oh, okay, you know, oh. that should be it. No, great oh. mash out from Aiden. Literally mashing for his life. Fully respect that. <laughs> hey, you know, sometimes it, it is the best play. Just press as many buttons as possible. But look at this combo. Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh he, he almost had missed. It. 
Yeah, he was so close to that. Uh, Charles almost got this game uh, stolen from him, but a nice four smash punish forcing him off stage. And we saw Aiden kind of baiting around with the flood a little bit. We've seen some fireballs. Uh, if he can force this offstage situation once more, I think he could take it from Charles. Oh yeah, okay, just the raw down smash. Thankfully, that fireball hit the arms this time, which will clink with the hitbox, which will allow Charles to still recover without too much hassle, but this is not looking good. The forward throw, yep, trying to get the recovery once Bounce. more, but he has to jump. All right, really important that fireball uh, clink with the up B versus just hitting him. I think it might've been his death. Otherwise, oh, great effort, punish. No, a dash attack punish. A little bit of nerves on Aiden's side or maybe a misinput from forward smash, not sure. But I, Charles still has one more opportunity to seal this out for the Holy Bros. Oh my goodness, just sitting there flubbing all over the place. I can, I get it, man. This is the championship. You're a little bit nervous. The nerves are rocking. But yeah, oh no, goodness, they're not punished. Oh this is no, fun. there it is. Okay. Okay. Aiden what is happening, man? <laughs> the game winning smash attack and again this is the finals this is the end of a pretty lengthy bracket for oh. everybody involved so i i know the nerves have to be on eleven thousand right now but, yep whew, sometimes you gotta take a deep breath and just look at a solid punish and be like you know what this is an opportunity the first one i was like all right he got a dash tag he probably meant to four smash i get it mm -hmm. the second or third one i'm like Come on, sis. <laughs> you got this. <laughs> I think that wasn't even a dash tag. I think that was a down tilt. Down out. Because right. of the way the way he popped up, he went like up a bit. So I'm thinking it was a down tilt and he meant the down smash. That's what I'm guessing. Because we, we did see him favor down smash at least a couple times there. So that's what I think was happening. He just didn't get the smash input, got the down tilt instead. But that's fine. Um But yeah, right now it's just a matter of trying to get into uh, our next game here um we'll see exactly how that plays out yeah and um one thing i can notice that aiden has picked up on is that charles seems to be very uh trigger happy when it comes to that donkey kong up the grounded one which is really good if you can land it but uh a lot of them have been unsuccessful and uh it ended up being the reason he lost that fourth game and maybe if aiden starts like scouting that out more he can start getting harder and harder punishes because mm -hmm. there was a point where he tried to trap his landing with a down smash like he's looking for what he's doing defensively i think aiden is on the right track here uh it's just gonna be at this point in game five it's just gonna be whichever player can make the tiniest of adjustments is gonna take this set yes i mean right now the big adjustment that is needed for sure is charles needs to stop sd'ing some stocks here and i do not know how i feel about this final stage pick uh because this is charles counter pick right interesting yeah uh, yeah 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 this is charles's counter pick so I wonder what the what the focus is here because I, this stage, I mean, it's good for Mario because it'll, it'll allow him to live a little bit longer, right? In these side platforms, though, they actually do allow Mario some really nice combo extension. So I'm not entirely sure. Donkey Kong still works pretty well on these platforms as well. Uh, it's just that I, I feel like Mario gains a lot more. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a little bit wonky here. Uh, oh, oh, there it is. All right, that time. So at first when he got the side B, you saw him try to get the up smash and try to like bait when he was going to hop out. This time he's like, nope, just going to go straight to four smash. You know, no risk, just going to go straight for the fastest punish I think I can get. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, unfortunate. Got the trip on the down tilt, which is definitely what they were looking for, but they didn't get the grab. And that would have definitely opened up quite a bit of percentage there for Donkey Kong. But either way, both of them just kind of jacking for position again at center stage. And Charles is certainly playing at a different level right now. You know, maybe sometimes get to the stage, he just feels comfortable. Again, I'm always a big advocate for stage comfortableness. Like, it doesn't necessarily have to counter pick where you do best, it's where you feel most comfortable. And Charles looks like they're comfortable. Yeah, and he's really just been walling Aiden out. He's been uh, spacing really carefully with these back airs. He's not afraid to just like uh, just shield some of these aerials and just kind of retreat and take that space away from Charles. So, uh, or from Aiden, excuse me. Oh my God! And he's not afraid to punch somebody in the chest either. Uh, this is a really big lead for Charles. A huge turnaround from how close that uh, game four was. Yeah, no, that's this is definitely huge. Now we just have to hope that they don't go too ham off stage because we do know Charles likes to go for those crazy stocks. Um, you know, hey, 120, 130, this isn't undoable for Mario. You and I have both seen some crazy shenanigans from this character before, and we would not be surprised to see this game. Like, did you see that jab at the other direction? Oh. It behind Mario? God. Un unfathomable stuff we're seeing right now. Uh, but yeah, Mario is definitely a character that can just really just steamroll you with just a smidge of momentum, especially with a platform oh. layout of Kalos. Oh, and there is the, I'm gonna say it, trademark SD from Charles, unfortunately. <laughs>
I'll be a great Bayonetta player. Huh? That's all I'm going to say. I'll but... probably be great. <laughs> so oh, I... my God. This is what we're talking about. This, this is, is what exactly we're talking what we about. Oh, no, you dropped it. I'm not sure if that's what they wanted. I think they're try probably trying to look for an up air, but ended up landing on the stage and did not get the jump exactly how they wanted to. But still, that's 73% unanswered. Oh, yeah, absolutely nothing to sneeze at. Just fully just walking Charles around both sides of the stage to the platform, chasing him after he air dodges, just really, really uh, going aggressive right now. Which, mm -hmm. honestly, you're way behind, so I kind of get it. And the forward smash on the parry uh -oh. for the back air, really nice stuff, killing even on Kalos from center stage. Yeah, this is definitely getting a little bit nerve-wracking. You can see, it looks like Charles might just be kind of getting a little bit uh -oh. desperate here. Mario doing some Mario things, great stuff, recognizing Mario was gonna go high and not allowing him to get that forward air. But we do see the forward tilt from Charles, putting Mario off stage. Oh, this oh, is bad go. news. Yeah, yeah, a lot of damage for that punish here. Uh, after everything that's happened, being two stocks down, Aiden has just gone insane, taking the lead back. And it looks like he's honestly in a really good position to just win this entire set after going down so hard in the first two minutes of the game. Yeah, okay, there we go. Does get back there. Damn, just barely whiffing on the up smash. This is not looking good. Charles has one last attempt here because Mario does not flub too often. Okay, gets the late hit on the nair, looking for the tech in or the roll in for the up smash. All right, Aiden just has to not overextend, but now he's trapped to the ledge. He's avoided all the back airs. Woo! Back airs, Charles, but he does live thanks to A, Kalos Blast Zones, and B, Donkey Kong's incredible weight. But what is Charles gonna do from this position to take this back? Oh. He's getting down smash, and Aiden is going to win the set. The, the reverse three stock was actually disgusting. Like, wow, well well played from Aiden, and it just, it felt crazy. So like, actually what happened at one point when we saw that SD, I'm pretty sure that Charles was trying to throw out those back airs, trying to mash them out a little bit, right? Great tool. Mm -hmm. And that fireball hit him, and that turned Donkey Kong around, which forced that forward air, which we saw that first SD, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, I think that's that what happened sense. there. And then Mario did Mario things, man. There's just, there's not much you could do about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that was a really uh, explosive game five. Uh, and that's what I was just saying about watching or that's what I was saying earlier about this series. Like, it's so fun seeing these players have the time to learn and adapt to each other, because once it gets to that game four, game five territory, we start seeing some crazy stuff. And and we weren't kidding. We Skiff and I, we are seasoned. We have seen a lot of Mario shenanigans when he gets a little bit of momentum. That character shoots right up in the top tier. And it's really unsuspecting sometimes, but yeah, he he literally took full advantage of going to Kalos and just Charles could not, despite having the space, could not find a moment to breathe and he could not reset the momentum. That's what this really all came down to, I think. Yeah, no, definitely just, this honestly well played. And that just goes to show the difference between good players and great players sometimes is that mm -hmm. mental fortitude that even if you're down three stocks to one, you've got the gall to be able to make that run to take those next three stocks and take away that W. And in a game five situation, you know, nonetheless, I mean, it definitely goes to show that Aiden definitely has it to be able to make those runs. So honestly, just great stuff from Aiden. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's look into who I think we're going to have coming up next. Looks like we're going to have Julian versus Joel coming in next. Uh, and that win, Charles did, uh, excuse me, Aiden did win that for Hillmar. So Holy Bros wants to win the finals. Joel has to take this over Julian. But mm -hmm. let's see what happens. And of course, even if they do end up going down 2-0, as has been said, we're still going to see our third match, which will be Jose versus Michael. Yep, and it looks like we're going to be seeing Julian versus Joel starting off on small battlefield here. Going to see the Yoshi taking on the Byleth. So this should actually okay, be very nice. interesting. Yoshi is a fantastic combo character, really annoying too. Um, <laughs> but huh. this Agreed. character, which is what's really interesting, is that Yoshi struggles hard against sword characters, right? All of his mm -hmm. hitboxes are generally a part of his body, and sword characters kind of take advantage of that. Yeah, this is going to be interesting because, like, Yoshi, as, as uh, frustrating as they are to deal with, they do have to be in your face. And Violet, with crazy tools like their neutral air, uh, makes it kind of tough for a lot of players. So mm -hmm. it's going to come down to how well uh, Joel can adapt to Julian's pressure. Uh, but right now, it definitely looks like Julian's in a really good position. Yeah, no, right now, definitely a very 
solid place here. But there we go. Throwing out the up air. Ooh, and the egg. Just for a little bit of extra damage. Keeping Byleth afloat. And that's actually one issue that Byleth will have, right? Is that Byleth up in the air doesn't exactly have the greatest tools to get down. They do have an amazing Nair. We talked about that on Thursday, too. We saw some amazing Byleth gameplay there. But, oh, Ooh. my goodness. It, we're not even talking about the up smash yet. <laughs> Oh my God, that was a super nice up smash, yeah. And and that's what I'm talking about. Like Yoshi has to kind of like commit to being in Byleth's face. Oh my God, he might be dead. Okay, he had his jump, he had his jump. Yep. I thought he was dead. Uh, yeah, he has to commit to being in Byleth's face, but Byleth has like some pretty scary tools when you get into that range, uh, if they're ready for what you're going for. Okay, there nice. we go. Utilizing some really of those amazing there. planking tools that Byleth actually has. Byleth just near the legend general is terrifying. They've got so many ways to play defensively and also just punish hard for that. We just saw that attempt there. Uh, probably call it the, you know, the MK Leo classic, but that tether grab is terrifying. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, Julian's way down. He cannot find this first stock despite all the damage he was putting out at the beginning of this it really looks like joel just kind of uh is just running away with it right now mm -hmm. okay there we go gets the soft Ooh. hit i think that was also the armor from the jump okay looking for the down tilt into the up air definitely sets up nicely but a little too much damage for about to actually confirm into it yeah i was i was gonna say i think she just had too much rage because I've, I've seen that happen a thousand times from leo mm -hmm. um, so yeah